Hello, my name is Dr. Rachel James and I'm a cardiologist here at the Sussex Cardiac Centre in Brighton. The unit opened in 1999 and is based at the Royal Sussex County Hospital in the Millennium Wing. This DVD is to provide you with information about your forthcoming heart operation. The information will complement that in your surgical booklet. The DVD has been funded by the Sussex Heart Charity. The charity was set up in 1987 in Brighton, but it now funds many aspects of heart care across Sussex, including resuscitation training in the community, providing defibrillators in public places such as sports grounds, railway stations and community centres, and funding new aspects of treatment for cardiology and cardiac surgery patients. We hope you'll find the information in this DVD helpful. Hello, my name is Mike Lewis. I'm one of the cardiac surgeons here at the Sussex Cardiac Centre. The information booklet and DVD that you have been given will help you prepare for your stay in hospital. Please feel free to ask any further questions that you may have. What I'd like to do over the next few moments is just go through a few bits of extra information that I'd like you to know before you come in to hospital. If your health has changed since you last saw your surgeon, please get in touch with the hospital to let them know. Sometimes infection can spread from your teeth to your heart. Please make sure you have a dental checkup prior to coming in for your heart operation. If you are a smoker, you will reduce your risk of complications by stopping smoking at least six weeks prior to your operation. Continuing to smoke when you have your heart operation increases the risk of you having a chest infection, having a long time on a ventilator, and requiring a breathing tube in your throat called a tracheostomy. In this DVD, you will hear of the progress we expect you to make from day to day. When you are ready to go home, this should happen in as timely a way as possible. Hospital is only a good place to be when you need it. Nursing staff will talk to you about looking after your wounds following your operation. Please keep them clean, but do not put soap or antiseptics on them unless you are asked to do so. Once the wound is dry, you can let water run onto it in a shower, but please do not soak your wounds in the bath. Your operation will happen either in the morning or in the afternoon. You'll be told about your timings of surgery the day before your operation. We do our very best not to cancel operations, especially on the day of surgery. Sometimes, due to emergencies, it is necessary to postpone your operation. If your operation is cancelled, we will either keep you in hospital or send you home for a further date. The next time you come forward for an operation, you will be given priority. I am aware that this time must be very stressful for you and your family. The team here will do their very best to make you feel welcome and to make your stay here as pleasant as possible. We've written the cardiac surgery booklet to help you prepare for your surgery and answer some of the questions you might have, so please do take a few minutes to read it. When all your tests are complete, we'll phone you to offer you a date for your surgery. Once we've agreed a date, we'll then write to you with all the details and which medications you should stop taking before you come in. We do occasionally have to change dates if we have a large number of emergency operations, but we'll do everything we can to avoid this. In the booklet, you'll find a list of things to bring with you, including all your medications in their original boxes. Please only bring one small suitcase. We lock your belongings away when you go for surgery and we have limited space. We'll return this to you when you go back to your ward. In preparation for surgery, it's important that your alcohol intake is within recommended limits. If you do smoke, please stop at least six weeks before your surgery. If you'd like some help with these, you should talk to your GP. Please trim your nails and don't wear any nail polish when you come in. This is so you can reduce the risk of infection by keeping your hands clean. You'll be admitted onto one of our cardiac wards, usually in the afternoon, the day before your operation. 
These wards are for men and women, but there are separate toilets, bathrooms and changing facilities. Our team will come and see you before your operation. The evening before your surgery, we'll ask you to shower with a special antibacterial gel. Depending on the type of surgery, you may also need to shave parts of your body first. If you need help with this, please ask. But please don't shave before admission, as this can increase the risk of infection. You'll also be given mouthwash and nose cream to reduce bacteria in your nose and mouth. You won't be able to eat or drink for six hours before your surgery, but you can have sips of water for up to two hours before. After your operation, you'll wake up in the cardiac intensive care unit with an experienced nurse by your bed monitoring you very closely. We'll use a ventilator with a tube in your throat to help you breathe and you won't be able to talk or drink with this in, but it should be removed within a few minutes after you wake up. When you're awake enough, you'll be able to help control any pain yourself with a special pump. When you press a button, you'll receive a measured dose of morphine, but don't worry, the pump is set up to make sure you can't give yourself too much. You'll have this until your chest drains are removed, usually the day after your surgery. You'll then receive painkillers in tablet form. Normally, the morning after your operation, you'll be helped out of bed and into a chair. Getting you moving early helps to prevent chest infection or a blood clot from forming in your leg. By day two, you should be able to take a short walk with help and it should be possible to remove your catheter and most of your lines. You may also be moved from the cardiac intensive care unit onto the step-down ward if this move hasn't already happened on day one. How quickly you recover varies from person to person. You'll usually stay on the step-down ward until you're discharged home. It is normal to feel very tired during these first couple of days. You'll have a chest wound and possibly leg wounds if veins have been taken for bypass surgery. Any surgery poses a risk of wound infection, but everything possible is done to try to prevent this. We normally keep dressings on for up to four days unless they need to be changed sooner. It's important not to touch the wounds and avoid using soap or rubbing them when washing. We'll show you how to do this while your wounds are healing. It would really help us if only one relative or friend calls to ask how you're doing and then tells other family members. This means that the nurse looking after you can stay with you rather than be called away too often. Throughout your hospital stay, we allow up to two visitors at any one time. This helps us keep noise and disturbance to a minimum so you and other patients don't get too tired. We do ask visitors to please stick to visiting times other than in exceptional circumstances with approval from the nurse in charge. It's important that family and friends not visit if they're unwell themselves. You'll be seen every day on the ward round and this is a chance for doctors and nurses to review your progress and see how you're doing against certain milestones each day after your operation. For example, on day three following surgery, you should be able to walk up two flights of stairs under the supervision of a physiotherapist. We'll then start planning your discharge date. On day four, you'll have some further tests, an ECG, which helps us see your heart rhythm, chest x-rays and blood tests. It's very common to feel quite low at this point. Patients sometimes call this the day four blues, but it does resolve quickly. We'll also remove your chest wound dressing, which will have been in place since your operation. You're likely to be discharged five to seven days after your surgery, depending on your recovery. If your wounds are still a little oozy, we may ask the district nurse to come and change your dressings when you're home. It's normal to be anemic following heart surgery, and this should recover in a few weeks. It's also important to avoid heavy lifting for the first three months in order to allow your breastbone to heal. In preparation for being discharged home, our pharmacist will come and see you to explain the medications you'll need. You'll be given a 14-day supply of tablets to take home and a letter explaining the treatment you've had and all your medications. Your GP will also get a copy of this. We ask our patients to make their own arrangements for getting home from hospital. We recommend you ask a friend or relative to take you home and stay with you and support you for the first two weeks following your discharge from hospital. You'll be sent an appointment to see your surgeon about six weeks after you leave hospital. During your stay in hospital, you'll meet someone from our cardiac rehabilitation team. This team is here to help you with your physical and general recovery following surgery. They'll invite you to attend a talk before you leave hospital and we encourage your relatives or carers to attend this talk with you so they understand what to expect in the first weeks at home. We talk about how to manage any pain at home, 
caring for your wound and who to contact if you have a problem. We also explain symptoms you may experience following surgery, such as blurred vision or palpitations, your feelings and emotions, when to resume having sex, information on driving, and insurance, including travel insurance. If you live locally, you'll be invited to attend the cardiac rehabilitation program at the Royal Sussex County Hospital. If you live outside the area, the cardiac rehabilitation nurse will refer you back to your local hospital for this. We strongly encourage you to attend the cardiac rehabilitation sessions. This will help your recovery and give you the confidence to return to a normal life.